Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of the Women's Sports Matter podcast. My name is Gianna Bel Castro, and I am your host. Today, I know we're doing another interview. I just love getting people on the show because, again, sitting by myself and talking is not fun. <laughs> but I'm here with another person, and that's so awesome. Can you please introduce yourself? Yeah. Hey, everybody. My name is Erica Piancastelli. I am, I'm going to start off with I am a, two-time AU player. So this is my second year with AU. I was part of the inaugural season last year, which was a huge hit. I'm super excited to be part of that. I'm on the Italian national team. I'm actually the captain of the Italian national team. And we just recently got back from Tokyo for the Olympics. So that was a super fun experience. Um, I went to McNeese State for four years, little small school in Lake Charles, Louisiana, D1. Um, I was a two-time All-American, broke, 19 records 20 records um got my jersey retired from there and then played professionally for scrapyard fast pitch they're no longer a team and that's kind of where like my professional career started and then have been bouncing back and forth between italy and the states and then au came and i've been hooked to au ever since so i want to talk about um the start of au i i know that um it started was it was softball the first sport of AU? Yes. 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 Um, I want to know about the process of like trying out and hearing about it. Um, if you were skeptical of the idea at first, just like all the beginner stuff with AU. Yeah. So AU actually is a league that's ran by players. So the first, I want to say first four players were Gwen Zvekis, Victoria Hayward, Haley Wagner. Those were the three main players and then there was also a player her name was Jade Rhodes and they were in charge of kind of finding players so there wasn't a tryout the first year they were it's kind of like on a name and name basis and kind of like if you know the right people um if you're at an elite level they they were just going to invite you so I got invited by Jade Rhodes and she was kind of like I was in Italy at the time actually and we were in complete lockdown so I was stuck at home kind of going through a depression just because I haven't been outside. I haven't been playing. Everything was getting canceled um, with the national team. Everything was getting canceled. So I guess I always say like AU kind of was my saving grace that year. And Jade Rhodes had reached out and she was like, Hey, we're doing this new professional league. Um, it's only six weeks. And she kind of explained it, but not really. She told me to wait to talk to Sherry Kemp because she's kind of the director of everything. And I honestly, as soon as I just heard softball league, I was like, I'm in. Like, I didn't want to hear anything else. I was like, I need to play softball. I need to be in the States. I need to be doing something right now. Um, so then Sherry kind of explained everything. And I was not expecting a point system. I was just thinking four teams playing against each other, like for six weeks, that's it. Um, she started explaining draft and points and leaderboards and all these bonuses and how it was going to work. And like, I was on, I was kind of speechless at first because like how did they even think of this system like how did this even pop up um and then they kind of started explaining how it's more of like a fantasy softball league kind of um to get the best of the best to compete and I don't I wasn't skeptical on the league itself I was more very curious on the point system because when you first hear about it you start thinking very individually about it so you're like okay well individually like how, how I'm gonna make points individually like it's it's based on your own stats and like it's kind of like one against everybody everybody's like fighting for a point but the week one when we first started playing you realize like yes it's set up for individual stats and everyone like based on your individual stats that's how much money you get and how many points you get but they also have these like small points that start to add up with team wins and and team inning points and game points and um, if a pitcher throws a shutout or a no hitter. So it starts to kind of put the whole game of softball in a team perspective. And it makes you really go back and work on the basic things. So like um, in the very beginning, when we were younger, they always told us how, how important innings were. And then you get older and you don't really think about innings. You, thought, you just think about the end result. You're like, I just need to win the game. Like we don't need to win innings. And then AU really kind of brings you back. And it's like, if you don't, you can win the game and lose five out of those seven innings and you only get 20 points. So it's, it really starts to make you focus on the little things and trying to work as a team. And then it challenges you because every week you're on a different team. So as a catcher, especially, you have to constantly be talking to your pitchers, constantly be understanding like what your team does, what, how they play. So it's a very challenging and rewarding league. 
Um, and I loved it the moment I got to Rosemont and we had our first practice. I just loved the atmosphere. I loved the vibes they were having. Um, they finally treated us as professional athletes. I, like I said before, I played for Scrapyard, but it was, it was more of like um, an independent league where you kind of were doing your own thing. And then a, you, you get to AU and there's people that are actually taking care of you and actually um, treating you as a professional player. So it's an amazing league. And I think um, even though we were in a bubble and we didn't have fans, we got the full experience. And it's something I try to tell everybody like you have to join AU because it's just, it's going to change your view on softball. It's going to change your love for the game and it's just going to make you compete. One thing that I'm very, very curious about is how AU softball, like it was the f very first thing with AU. How in the world did you guys get fans? You didn't have anyone in the stadiums at all in the first season because of COVID. And then all of a sudden there's this growing following and there's new sports being added to the league. I'm just curious, like, how did this happen? Honestly, I think they were so smart with the timing of it. Um, you know, going through that big initial stage of our pandemic and everybody, all the sports were canceled. So at the time when AU started, no, there were no sports on TV. So we kind of took advantage of that. We're like, okay, well, we're going to put every game on TV. So now softball is the only thing that people can watch. Um, and then we got big time names. So we had Kat Osterman, we had Jesse Warren. Um, we had all these big time names of national team players from um, different national teams, but also um, Olympians and college players that had just graduated. And so you have all these names um, and they really hounded us on sharing and, and using our platforms. And so I think that was the smartest move was just sharing and using our platforms and kind of like continuously talking about this new league since there were no other leagues to confront it to. Like no more, MPF wasn't, was canceled. Uh, national teams were stopped playing football wasn't on tv baseball wasn't on tv so it's kind of like okay let's take advantage of this dead period and just post 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 and then I think the games kind of spoke for themselves you saw the game on tv and you saw bombs after we had so many home runs the first year like home run after home run and all these type of celebrations and um cat throwing 16 strikeouts like it was just so much elite softball I think all at once that it's impossible, I think, as a fan to not be hooked right away. Um, and then I think they also do a great job with their app and their social media and kind of rewarding fans and allowing them to interact with us. And I think we've never really had that with softball is you never really had a platform that allowed you to interact with players and interact with fans. And so I just think overall, AU, it kind of came out of nowhere, but I think they really planned it for a good bit of time to just how can we take advantage of this negative situation that we're in and turn it around for players. The fact that I, AU makes me speechless with a lot of things. Like it, it's so unexpected, if you know what I mean, with everything yeah. that's happening, like being on FS1 and FS2 and, and CBS Sports Network, like that's big names. Like it took forever for the WNBA and NWSL to like kind of get on those platforms. How, do you know how that, uh, how AU was able to be picked up for the, the, pl the platforms that I just mentioned. And, you know, also with it being on uh, YouTube and uh, Facebook live, that is also really helpful too. Um, but I just want to learn more about like the TV aspect. of it. Yeah, I honestly, and I think the first year we were on ESPN two, I think we were on like ESPN three or ESPN two. Um, and I think it goes back to just, there were no sports on TV. So I think just the fact that we were able to, because of our bubble situation and, and they planned COVID protocols really, really strictly the first year. So we were stuck in a bubble. We had no fans and because they were able to make the league actually happen. I think that was the biggest selling point on TV um, channels was this is the only sport that we can actually get on TV. Like why not? Um, and I think that helped a lot. And John and Jonathan are just very, very committed to their work and, and they're very intelligent and they know exactly how a business works. And so um, they use kind of their business side of it and they collabed with Gwen, Vic and Haley who are, have been playing professional softball for a long time as well. And I, they just made it happen. And um, I think they're continuously working on things and, and trying to get more fans involved. And you say you're sh you're speechless with AU like I'm I'm a player and this is my second year and I still can't find the words to describe the experience because last year was one experience and season two was a whole 
completely different experience because we had fans and um, we had interaction with them, autographs, and uh, we had an app that we were like launching and allowing people to become our unlimited picks. And there was so much involved in this year's season that I'm still speechless right now that we even got through six weeks so fast. Um, but I'm honestly excited for what's in store because I know they're about to do some big things as well and they want to um, expand maybe the broadcasting and get more games in and they're going to start with new sports. And the fact that volleyball and lacrosse also had success just shows you how, how well put together AU is. I feel really lucky, like, living in Illinois and being able to go to travel to Rosemont. Um, like, I, I, was, I was so happy when I found out that it was here because – we have, sure, we have the Sox and the Cubs. I don't like the Cubs. Um, and we have the Sky and whatever. But this was a new thing for me. And I was like, I, I wanted to go check it out. I actually, my first little, um, I never sat down and watched softball before until the Olympics. Team USA versus Team Italy. That was the game that I tuned in for. Um, I I was like, okay, I guess I, guess I like softball now. Uh, what was your experience like in Tokyo? I've seen like you talk about it before. Um I want to know specifically um, with the whole bubble experience and seeing like your friends on different national teams and also competing against them and meeting new people too. um, What is the best part about that? The best part for me at the Olympics was seeing all the players that I've known and through AU, through college, just seeing familiar faces And then also kind of seeing the environment around us and taking it all in and and kind of being like, okay, I know we've all dreamed about getting to the Olympics and now we're finally here and we're like looking at each other face to face. Like you can just tell everybody was so emotional and it was just an amazing experience just being there. And then obviously competing at that level and and the the level of softball that was at the Olympics is just unreal. It's it's such a high level and it's so much fun to be able to um, not only compete for the country that you're playing for and for your team, but then also competing against the players that um, I got so close to with, with AU because we were obviously in a bubble. So I got to know them on a whole uh, different level. And so just seeing them and, and kind of going back to the conversation we had in AU season one, and then now seeing um, us at the Olympics is just un- unreal. And at the Olympics, I think my favorite, favorite part was the cafeteria. And every time I say that, people start laughing because they're like, why is, like, out of the whole thing, the cafeteria? Interaction, like, right? Right. It's yeah. like the Olympic Village is you're next to every single athlete. Like, no one is treated differently. It's every country's there. Every country is able to do what, whatever they want in the village. There's a shop. There's a nail salon. There's um, a cafeteria. And then you kind of just can walk around, ride your bike. You can do whatever. It's like a small little city. But the moment and you you start to see all these athletes walking around but you never really like you kind of just pass by them until you get to the cafeteria then you get to the cafeteria and you're literally standing right next to one of like the most elite olympic athletes like i was standing right next to um some super famous italian swimmers and people that i know from back home and um i saw nba players playing for basketball teams there and you're just seeing all these people in your starstruck every single time as you're like eating a muffin like it's just the weirdest experience like you're you kind of like it's weird to be able to be sitting and eating and enjoying your meal and being right across of someone that's won three olympic medals or someone that you've always seen on tv and um and then taking a step back and saying i'm at the same level as these athletes like i've always looked at them on tv and now i'm actually here with them and we're eating like two feet away from each other. Like it's, it's such a surreal experience and you never know who you're going to see. So I was always super excited to go to the cafeteria. I did not miss a single meal. I was like, I'm going to be there. I'm going to just hang out. I'm going to go an hour and just sit there and eat my food very slowly so I can just people watch. So that's all I did. Like it was such an amazing experience and definitely something that no one really gets to experience until you're at the Olympic Village. So it's definitely something that I will cherish. With the Olympics happening um, this first time in the while that softball has been involved, obviously your mom played for um, Team Italy. Now you're playing for Team Italy. Uh, there's some sort of like legacy thing going on here that I think is really cool. I actually, before we started talking, I rewatched the Letters from Home video where you got a letter okay. from your mom. Yeah, uh, that I thought was super special. Um, can you talk about your relationship with your mom and how you got involved in softball? 
Yeah. So um, my mom always played in Italy and, and she was on the national team. I think she started in 1996. So the year we were born um, and then obviously we were born. So she took a break and then she came back from having me and my sister and came back and was able to make it for the 2000 Olympic team. And they went to Sydney. And I think I've always idolized my mom just for being an athlete, like everything she did. I like saw so many pictures and videos and um, I've always wanted to be an athlete. Me and my sister were kind of pretty much raised outdoors. Like we were always outside playing, doing something, never stood still. And the crazy thing is I never started with softball. I actually never really thought about starting softball. It was more of like, I just want to play sports. So I tried out, uh, I tried gymnastics, swimming, basketball, volleyball. I tried every sport except for softball. And my parents never even forced it on me, which was, it shocks a lot of people because they're, like, they're probably like, oh, your mom and dad, because my dad was a baseball player. They're like they probably like told you to play softball right away. But I'm like, actually, no, like they didn't even, they didn't want to force it on us, I think, because. I think my mom knows um, how tough softball is when you get to a high level. And if you don't love it and if you don't want to play like because you personally love the sport, it's going to be hard um, to get far with it. So I think she kind of just observed a little bit and wanted to see what sport I would choose. And then I went up to her at the age of seven, um, me and my sister were like, well, uh, there's a league right near our house. Like, let's just try Like, I want to try softball. And my mom and dad actually were our first coaches. Like they signed up to be coaches for like this rec ball league. Um, so then that's where it started. I, as soon as I started playing softball, I loved it. And I kind of dropped every other sport. Um, I just wanted to focus on softball. I did play basketball in high school, but too much running for me. I could not do it. My sister ended up choosing basketball instead. So clearly we're complete different people. Um, but yeah, I just started playing softball. And I think knowing that my mom was always going to be in my corner is what pushed me even more. Cause I just knew that I have an Olympian in the house like she's my coach like I can go far with this if I just listen to her and and she can teach me everything she did we play the same position and so I really idolized her growing up but it didn't hit me until college it didn't hit me how important my mom would be in my softball career until college um at first um I mean you know you're an athlete as well like as an athlete when your parents talk to you it goes one in one ear out the other like it's your parents, like, they don't know anything, and I kind of, that's kind of, like, the attitude I had, and everyone's, like, Erica, I can't believe you had the attitude, and your mom was an Olympian, I, I was stubborn, I, like, did not want any information um, until college, when, like, I was far away from them, and I think that's when it hit me, I was, like, okay, well, I don't have them at home, I can't just ask them whenever I want, like, I actually really have to take this in, and so that's when my mom, um, and, like, me and my mom's bond got really close, because I also was uh, starting with a national team as well, and then we found out softball got put into the Olympics. So that's when I was kind of like, oh, definitely need to really hound in right now, listen to my mom and, and try to pick her brain. And she's always been my number one fan, always in my corner. And so being able to kind of go through the same journey that she went to uh, went through, but making it kind of my own and, and having my own experiences was really cool. And I always had her to talk to and always had her to ask questions. And as soon as we qualified for the Olympics, um, being able to like we were in uh, lockdown so that's when I really was able to ask her so many questions about like the Olympics the village um what to expect what did they do kind of like her training journey and then also being able to be at home and train with her helped a lot because in quarantine like we were kind of like on our own our national team didn't have anything we didn't really have anybody following us so it's kind of like they kind of just told us practice like we're going to be on the field soon like that's all they kept telling us um, so being able to have my parents there was huge and um, she's just always my number one fan and anything I do she's always like the first one cheering she stays up and watches my games and when she sent me that letter I like I never get emotional with my mom which is weird like even when we qualified she was bawling her eyes out but I was just like smiling every like I just smile a lot that's I kind of like I think I just get too excited but that letter really got me emotional just because it kind of hit me like that I went through this whole journey with my mom and so it's start it's starting all to hit me right now and, and also the fact that I went to the Olympics, like it didn't really settle in until AU. Um and so I think it's all starting to hit me right now. And it's just I'm very blessed to be able to to do what I do and be able to have her by my side. Speaking of the Olympics, uh a lot of Olympians after they come back, they get the, the fancy uh tattoo. What was that experience like for you? And I wanna ask you oh, about yeah. your other tattoos that you have. Um 
I love stories behind tattoos. It's not really a thing that I get to talk a lot about on here, but I wanted to ask you about that. Oh, yeah. I booked my tattoo appointment while I was at the Olympic Village. I was like, I need to get this tattoo right now. I love tattoos. I love, like you said, I love the story behind it. I'm always curious with when people have tattoos, like, like what did, what's your reason or what's your story? And let me, it's kind of like art to me. Like, I think our bodies are, um, they're just like a blank canvas and the tattoos are like, so it, it can mean so many different things to so many different people. Like one little symbol could mean something to you and then someone else has a completely different story. So I think it's just super beautiful. And my sister is very artistic too. So she designed all her tattoos. And then I ask her always to design mine because I'm like, I'm very, very basic with like my imagination. Like nothing is, I just can't, I can't draw. I draw six figures. So I'm always like uh, bouncing ideas off my sister. And for the Olympic tattoos, um, I've always seen my mom's tattoo, which was, it's behind her shoulder. And I'm always like, one day, you know, I'm going to get that same thing. And I really wanted my tattoo to be somewhere where I see it, but at random times. So like I have it right now, I have it right here. And I, I was talking to Halo, Haley McClenney. She has it in the same spot, just a different style. And we were talking about how We'll, we'll be doing random things like washing our hands or washing the dishes and we just like look down like oh yeah we're olympians like we just look down and it's just like brings a big smile to our face so that's like my biggest reason behind it and I wanted obviously the 2020 to be on it because 20 is a very lucky number for me and Tokyo 2020 is obviously very symbolic um and I always go to this one person in Italy who does my tattoos and I kind of like have full trust in him so I don't really have a design I'm just like you, this is my idea, you draw something and I'll get it on me. Cause I'm very, very free like that. Um, so I kind of did the same thing with my other tattoos. I have one behind my shoulder. It's a turtle with a hidden, with hidden like uh, letters and numbers in it, in the, inside the turtle. And it's for my grandparents. So I have my grandparents initials in there. I have my birthday and kind of like a family turtle. Cause turtle like in Hawaii means family. So it's like this big family thing on my shoulder. That was my first tattoo. Um, this is the coordinates to McNeese. So I got this one with four seniors, four other seniors. And it's kind of like our journey at McNeese. My favorite one besides the Olympics is the butterfly behind that. I got that one actually during the pandemic. It was something I was just drawing in my notebook a lot. The, the butterfly just brings like a lot of peace to me. It's a blue butterfly and, and in the pandemic, like I said before, like my mental health was a roller coaster, like up and down was um, kind of just the, the situation we were in and being so far from my friends and, and from softball. So I constantly just found myself drawing this blue blue butterfly and um, I got a phrase in it that says, you are strong, you are, you are enough, set yourself free. And I just kept writing that, I kept writing that. So I'm like, I'm gonna get this on me so I can like remember um, just everything that we went through. So. I got that. That's probably my favorite. And then I have one on my ribs, which is like the Italian, it's the Italian boot, but it's made with my family's name, um, my family members' names. So it's just all names and it kind of just makes the Italian boot on my ribs. So that's, really that's cool. about it. Yeah, I'm trying to get more. I just need to have, need to be a little bit more. Um, I just want to wait for like a good idea to come, you know, so I'm, I'm open. Because I like the, the boot one sounds very cool. Um, my family yeah. is Italian too. Like I, I figured as soon as I saw your name. Yeah, I like, <laughs> yeah, it's Italian. Um, it's like, I believe I'm like seventy something percent, and then there's like German and Irish. I yeah. think I'm fourth or fifth generation. One of the two. I really don't remember. My mom <laughs> told me a, a long time ago, but yeah, no, I'm Italian. It, it, it's whatever. <laughs> Hey, that's the best one yes I always I can tell as soon as I see names I'm like they're Italian I wonder and then sometimes like I wonder if they know they're Italian because like some people kind of like you know like after generations you don't really talk about it as much um, but in Chicago there's a lot of Italians there I saw yes which made me very happy I was like yes oh I, I've known that I was Italian for a long time like Good. there's there's a town in Italy Bel Castro so it's a very small town though I think it's in the I think it's in the heel if you know yeah. what I mean yeah yeah um I've never been to Italy my family has always talked about going um I 
I really want to go so badly. You're young. Remember, you're young. I know. I'm so you young. Got time. <laughs> I think my uncle uncle has gone, but I really want to go to. I'm really into soccer, so I want to go to a Milan derby. AC Milan, Inter Milan. I feel like that would be that would be such a fun time. I just wouldn't root for either team. I just Honestly, want to be there in that atmosphere. Any city in Italy, if you bring up soccer, like that's it. Like you're literally soccer is huge in Italy, so uh, you'll definitely that's a, an experience in itself to go to soccer. I haven't even been to a soccer game. They're like dangerous. That's how crazy it is in Italy. Fans get crazy, especially. I mean, the Milan Derby. I've heard a lot of things about that. It looks so fan, fun, yeah, though. <laughs> yeah, I would definitely go. Definitely. Um, a lot of stuff has happened for Italy in the past like year. You know, with softball being a thing and Italy winning the Euros. Um, how proud are you to be Italian? Very proud. Very, um, yeah, me too. <laughs> yeah, the just being on the Italian national team is so much bigger than itself. Like just anytime you look down and you see your jersey and it says Italia, like all all in big over it, like you kind of, you really feel that you're representing your country, your family, like, and especially me, I feel like maybe even more for me because I know that my mom had that same responsibility. And so it's kind of like, I'm not only doing it because I'm proud to be Italian, but I'm doing it for my family. I'm doing it for uh, my mom's, journey I'm doing it for my kids my future kids the kids that are watching me I'm doing it for softball in Italy because I don't know if you know but like in Italy not only in Italy in Europe softball isn't really a sport like it's either you play soccer or you don't exist like that's how kind of how the mindset is in Italy and so knowing that I have a part in growing the game in Italy and being able to do it um while also representing my country, it's just it warms my heart. It's literally the best experience. Like we could be just practicing in, in the blue Italy shirt and I'm just with the biggest smile on my face just because it's just such an amazing environment. Um, and just everything we've been through, like the Europeans, we won, we hadn't, we won all, all the games. We've never lost. And that was, we've never done that before. Cause I think we've always gone to the finals and um, it's always between us and Holland win some lose some it's always us two in the finals but we never had the journey that we had this year like we've always kind of you know you lose a game but you always make it to the finals this year we just kind of like went right through all the competition until the finals and I think it was also because we had so much more that we were playing for we had lost our head coach beginning of the year um for due to COVID and it kind of um it was just like a a big moment for us is okay we've done it for for five years because I was on it for five years we've been playing for this man like our coach like Enrico he was like the one person that kind of held us all together and um pushed us always like no matter how small softball was in Italy he always was like you're gonna make it big thing one day you're gonna keep um using your platform you're gonna grow the game just keep going keep going and because obviously we didn't have people supporting us we don't except for our family we didn't have anybody else supporting us in Italy um and he was always kind of like the guy that the man that believed in us and then having him pass out of nowhere and no one really expecting it especially the year that we were supposed to go to the Olympics and he was a big reason as to why we were going to the Olympics um was definitely a moment that I think could have destroyed us completely but I think that it actually brought us a lot closer and it made us play for something far greater than ourselves and our country. And so um, that last game against Holland and us winning the way that we did, we were down by three in the first and kind of, it kind of brought us back to the qualifiers because the Olympic qualifiers, we played Holland in the, in one of the last games and we had to beat them obviously because we had to win all five and we go into the first inning and we're losing four zero right away off the bat and like that never happens with Holland because Holland is such a great team and only being able to score one or two runs is kind of like how the game is always like one zero two zero one one and they scored four right away and so I think the fans and the people watching us were kind of like oh crap like this isn't going to be a good game but something like I don't know something like switched and we ended up winning seven to two uh seven to four at the qualifiers and end up qualifying obviously and I think we had that same thing happen to us at the European Championship this year. We were down 3 nothing in the first. 
but like you could just tell like how our team was playing that three nothing for us was nothing we're just like whatever it's the first inning and I think we also always had like our um our coach's voice kind of like the same speech he gave to us at the qualifiers we kept replaying in our heads and we ended up winning I don't even remember what the final score was I want to say five to two for the um Europeans and it was just like so emotional everybody everybody in the stands was crying we because we had it in Italy as well so everybody knew who our coach was everybody in the stands were cry- was crying all the players were crying and our head coach that became head coach um, was actually the assistant at the time and one of Enrico's like best friends and his wife which is um, our first base coach was there also so it's just like a like I got I get goosebumps every time I'm like talking about it just because I still can't believe it actually happened the way that it did and, and, and us having to go through that. So um, now I feel like playing for Italy means a lot more because of that. And we're always going to have him in the back of our head, like all his speeches, everything, he, like him yelling at us. Like we're always constantly like playing it because he was just such a huge role model for us. Um, and he's the main reason softball even exists in Italy. So I think that just makes us wearing the, the blue jersey mean a lot more. That was a, I, I didn't know anything about, you know, the coach or European stuff. Don't really, again, very new to the softball yeah. world. Um, but like, that is quite um, the tale of Italian softball um, in recent times. Just that, I, I have no words, honestly. Like, I can't imagine losing a coach like that, um, especially during covid that I, I don't know how you guys did it, but like congrats on, on all of that <laughs> stuff. Honestly, like Thank that you. is really special. That must have been like a really, really special win. And I hope you guys celebrated in a way to honor him. Um, I want to go back to talk about AU. So you were a team captain for week one. I'm assuming that means you were in the top, who's the top four for the top first four, season. Yeah. yeah. Um, I got the chance to watch the draft and I also was like when I first watched it I was like this is very confusing like what is what is going on um so for your first pick for this year I wanted to ask you like how did you come to this decision um like what was the process for the draft and how did you pick the players that you picked yeah so this season two the first draft was set up um, with the results from last year so I came in fourth last year um, and so it was the top four became captains automatically for season two so I was captain of the purple team but this year they changed the way the draft worked so last year it was gold number one would pick first and then you kind of laddered um, down and went back up this year they decided to start with team purple and go four three two one and then back to one two three four so not only was I randomly a captain I also had to have the first pick of season two so I was so nervous I was like my pick is gonna kind of like it's it's gonna like choose how the rest of the draft goes like I can mess it up for everybody or I can like just have a really good team so I had so much pressure on myself and drafts are already like overwhelming because you're kind of doing it on your own, you know, and the, and you kind of have to like split like, oh, but I want my friends or, but I want these people. And it's very hard to do very hard, especially when you have a pool, like your selection is the top of the top, like everybody's good. So you don't know who to pick first or um, who's going to still stay in the uh, draft as you're going. So um, there isn't really a strategy behind it. And especially since I was first pick, and then I had a big break in between. I think I, was, I had eight picks to wait for my second one. I was kind of like, I'm going to pick the first person and then I'm just going to see how things go because I can't really like make a strategy and see who everyone gets. And my first pick was Sarah G, Sarah Groenwagen. And I picked her because um, as a first pick, a lot of the times it's always a pitcher. You always want to have a good pitching staff. So my first pick was a pitcher and I just always idolized Sarah G at the Olympics and with the Canada national team, like she is such a badass athlete. Like, I don't know. Can I say that? Yeah. On here? Yeah. Okay. She's such a, such a badass athlete. Like she's a competitor and she has a dirty changeup. And as I hit her, I was like, I don't want to face Sarah G. So I'm just going to take her first pick. Um, And that was kind of like my reasoning behind it. 
and then the rest you kind of just see how it goes like you have to see who everyone else gets and it never goes the way you think it's gonna go so like in, in your head you kind of think like oh well Kat's gonna choose this person and Vic's gonna choose this person and then they end up choosing like complete opposite people and then you're just like taken away and you have to kind of rethink everything um, but the super cool part about the draft is as you pick people they join the zoom room and so they're helping you like you're constantly talking to the team that you're you're forming together and they're like helping you and then you have a facilitator who's helping you so um, it's so much fun to be able to kind of like create your fantasy team um, but it's very stressful I think I've never been nervous for a draft and that day I was like shaking I was like my hands were shaking I was like oh my gosh <laughs> uh, it was very nerve-wracking but it was su super fun to create a team um, honestly being captain I'd rather not be captain like I think it's cool that you have a team and your name's everywhere um, and you kind of like I mean that means you're doing good because you're up in the leaderboard but the responsibility for being a captain is so stressful like you have to come up with a practice plan and you have to make the roster and you have to like make the changes during the game so it's like it's so stressful and I'm more of just like I just want to play like you tell me what to do I just want to play so I enjoy being captain but I also enjoy just being on um, on the players part of it and just seeing what team I'm going to be on so super fun experience I think everyone should try to be captain at least once but other than that I think uh Kat and Alicia Ocasio were probably the best captains just because they were so professional and they constantly were captains so <laughs> they had a lot of experience with it um with the the teams being created also is like an alter ego I guess would be the correct way to to say that um I want to know like what is the process behind coming up with those things? Like, just for an example, um, the week that I went was uh, the Golden Arches was a thing. And I was like, <laughs> they have the, <laughs> I want to know how they even got those Happy Meals. Did they actually go through a drive through for that? I was yeah. like, I, okay. <laughs> that was very yeah, funny. Like the crazy, the crazy thing about this year, last year we had team names, but because we didn't have fans, I think it was kind of just like a, for us to have fun with it. But I think this year having fans, like you guys, you fans, like made it come out of us even more. Like we were so bought in every weekend. We would go crazy for team names. Like that was honestly the most important thing. Like the first thing we talked about as a team was the team name. Like we're like, we're not going to come out with a practice schedule until we have a cool name. Like that was like the main point. Um, and the Golden Arches, yeah, that was hilarious. I saw them do like the M while they were doing the home runs. And the, I think the coolest part of the team name is the home run celebration. And funny thing is during practice, we actually like take 15 minutes out of our practice and, and work on our home run celebration, which is so crazy. Like no team ever does that, but at AU you do. Cause like you have to like make it fun for the fans. Um, and for me, I think the best team, um, I loved being on the Hoopers when we wore the jerseys. I don't know if you saw that. Uh, we wore the Looney Tunes jerseys the whole weekend and we were just like dunking and, and playing basketball. Um, and then my last team, the shooting stars, I obviously had a fun time with that. I was just jumping and doing stars like every two seconds. That's probably annoying, but um, I bought into every single team. Like, I think that was the best part of AU is just like coming up with fun ways to, to stay involved in the game and, and to get the crowd going every single time. So I think that's kind of what makes AU so different from any other league is like you really get the fans involved. I just like the the – the alter egos is, is super fun, like such a fun concept. Um, one thing, like, since I'm a new softball fan, I was like, why did they go out of the dugout during the, the home run so, uh, to celebrate like a home run or whatever? They don't do that in baseball. Like I, I grew up being a baseball fan, like baseball was my first sport. Um, it's so much more interactive in the world of softball. And it's always been super confusing, but I'm like, that's a great idea. People like the players should be doing this kind of stuff, like hyping their teammates up like that. It's it's a great environment. Honestly, men, man, men like <laughs> don't like to celebrate anything. They're such party poopers. Like I see baseball home runs and they all just kind of like the guy hits the home run and then they just give each other like high fives in the dugout. I'm like, that's so boring. And then in college, we actually like, we've always gone crazy. Like you, softball's always had like, crazy celebrations for home runs at the plate but it's more of like cheering like you weren't allowed to touch the player you weren't allowed to like throw props like that's not allowed um 
and AU is like breaks all rules and I think that's what makes it so much fun is like you can literally do whatever you want like you can do somersaults and backflips going into home play if you really wanted to and um I think what makes it so fun for us professional athletes is softball has always been very professional um we've always been professional with our celebrations like we just cheer and clap and and get loud but AU makes every little thing that you do fun and it allows you to just have a great time and and like use props so like golden arches like they did happy meals and they were eating chicken nuggets like who does that you know it's like only at AU and then I remember last year uh an orange team was they were the Fantas and after every home run they would pop a Fanta and just chug a soda like that's so cool to me and it's so much fun and it just makes you really want to just like go out there and have a great time and um I think that the last weekend, I don't know if you saw the the blue team, they were Carrie's berries. And I think I saw like, that, yeah. The oompa the oompa loompa blueberries and they would mm-hmm. like spray whipping whipped cream after like any point. Like that's just so fun to me and it makes just it, it makes it takes away the pressure of having to perform and it allows you just to have fun. And I think that's when you play your best softball is when you're having so much fun. Honestly, who else could say it better? <laughs> whenever whenever anything is fun you know it's gonna exactly. be a good time. like have fun it's not supposed to be exactly. that serious it's just game like bro. my favorite quote <laughs> my favorite quote is like you're never gonna be working a day in your life if you're having fun like if you're having fun nothing is called work and um softball is that for me like we're all like professional softball players like this is our job and we have fun doing it and I think that's what why we can play for so long and why we keep it going and it's way better than having like a nine to five in an office. That's for sure. So very, just going to keep riding this softball wave for a while. Playing softball until you're like 70 years old. Like I'm not working <laughs> nine to five. Right. Um, I, I will not work a nine to five. I will play softball, slow pitch. I will do everything I can. As long as his body keeps working, I will not be in an office. I will not be working a nine to five either. I don't think I can do that. No. No, it's boring. My mom does nine to five and it's like, mm, <laughs> I don't want to do that. You know, yeah. I'm not gonna, with me, I think like, I, I'm going to be a journalism major. So that's what I'm going to, I'm going to go into, or I, I work with a few sports teams, well, I work with a few sports teams. very minor stuff, um, <laughs> very minor stuff. I don't want to sound like some hot shot, actually. No, no, no. no. You need to, <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead. I was, um, so in Geneva, Illinois, there's a team called the Kane County Cougars. And that's was, uh, that was my first job with the sports team. I was their TV producer. That's the only hot shot thing I'm going to do. It was their first ever TV producer. And they put a 19 year old in charge. Well, I was 18 when I started there, but they put an 18 year old in charge of their TV production. What does that? That's a big deal. That's a very big deal. It is a big deal. Kind of. (laughs) I want to ask you one more thing before we go on our lightning round questions. Um, so before the Athletes Unlimited season started, or season two, you guys were at the White Sox game. That was the same day I was there, and I was like, oh, my God, these people no are way. here. And I got to see Kat <laughs> Osterman throw out that first pitch. And you guys also went to the Chicago Sky game. What was it like to do, um, like, city activities while you were here and, like, doing a little tour, going to all these different um, – pro games and did you guys go to Cubs game because like that's the worst thing that you could possibly do. no we we did not actually some girls did like on their own mm. they went to a Cubs game Ugh. I did not I did okay. not um but it was so much fun and I think also coming from season one our only experience with AU was a bubble so we weren't able to do any type of stuff like that last year and so being able to have the freedom this year to um see the city and go to uh, White Sox. I've never been to the White Sox stadium. So that was really cool for me. And um, I've never been to a WNBA game. So the Chicago Sky was actually my first WNBA game. And so it was, it was awesome to just be able to to do what everyone in Chicago does, like to, to be able to experience Chicago for everything that it is. And I went downtown a couple of times. I finally got to touch the bean. Last year, I went downtown on my last day because we were out of the bubble. But because of COVID, they had um they put like rails up and no one could go touch the bean and this year I was like all over I'm like I'm touching it I'm like I'm flicking it I'm doing everything I'm like I need to touch the bean like I've been here once already and so it's just fun to be able to just kind of like 
be a professional athlete, but then also have a social life outside of it and be able to uh, experience the city that you're in. Um, and I love Chicago. I think it's beautiful. Downtown's beautiful. Um, the last day, a group of the girls actually went kayaking in the river. I wasn't able to go because I had, I had to run a lot of errands uh, because I have to go back to Italy. So I had to do a lot of like last minute things, paperwork. Um, but they got to kayak in the in the Chicago River. And I think that that was beautiful. Like they, they were posting pictures and I was like, who gets to do that? Hey, you does. So it was super cool. And um, they like I said earlier, like they treat you like a professional and they really um, want you to have a good time. So they're always constantly like programming events and and just want you to experience everything for what it is. Yeah, super fun. I saw the videos of them out on the river yesterday. I was oh, like, so beautiful. How do you get to do that? Right. Like who, who has the connection? Yeah. yeah um, I think one, one team that you guys should definitely visit in the future, if it doesn't like interfere with your schedule is the Chicago Red Stars, which is the NWSL team here. I've never been to a game, but it seems like so much fun. Um, again, I'm biased. I'm a soccer fan, <laughs> but um, I think that was actually an option. Like, they was gave it an, us an option? option? They're like, do you guys want to go to Chicago Sky or what? what's the soccer team's name? Uh, Red Stars. Or the Red Stars. And I think everybody ended up voting for WNBA. So we ended up going to that. But I, I do remember seeing that name. So I was like, oh, we're, we're out here going to different sports. Like, that's kind of cool. So they made you. I'm sure, I'm sure it'll be on the schedule. Teams, yeah. <laughs> they were like, the Sky or the Red Stars? Well, I probably would have picked the Sky too, just because I'm more familiar um with all those peeps hopefully they won when you guys went I don't remember if they, they did. did not I thought they, they were didn't. playing the aces right it was like a blowout yeah. yeah but I it was also I think they were both already going to playoffs, so I yes. feel like it wasn't like an important game oh well there so, that's the rivalry that that's a rivalry yeah. game yes aces are good though they were good that was fun to watch <sighs> they're unfortunately they good <laughs> they're un- unfortunately good I don't know like they're probably going to make the championship this year, but that's like a whole nother thing. I'm not a fan of them. I am stick with my hometown teams. Yeah. <sighs> it's very stressful. Well, I thought Chicago had a great game recently. Yesterday? Are we talking about yesterday's game? The double I, I OT? With- the double OT game? I watched that whole mm-hmm. game. And let me tell you this. Who won? I was stressed out. The sky. Okay. And Courtney Vandersloot got a triple double and set the playoff uh, yeah, playoff uh, yeah. record for assists with like eighteen. That's assists. what I saw on Instagram. I was like, oh, I, I saw her. Yeah. yeah, very stressful to watch. Super duper stressful, and <laughs> it was my heart. Honestly, like, oh my god, I don't think I could talk about it anymore. Because I was tweeting during that <laughs> that game for the podcast account. And I was trying to do homework, and then I just put my homework to the side and I was like I'm gonna watch this game and I wanted to turn the tv off but I didn't and I watched them win anyway (sighs) Chicago sports sports in general that's what they do to you yes it's time for the fun (laughs) part of this uh, episode it's time for the lightning round questions my first question each time I do this is are you reading a book or listening to an audio book that you'd like to recommend for people Yes, currently I'm reading Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, but the book I read before, which I went crazy for on Instagram, I don't know if you saw, but I literally was telling everybody like for five days straight, I was like, you need to go read the book Verity. And I read it in two days and I'm not a reader and I haven't read in a very, very long time. I'm more of like, I watch movies and shows, Um, but at AU uh, with a lot of players, they were constantly talking about this book and I read Verity. I finished it in two days. I've never finished a book in two days, not even a homework assignment book that I had to read in high school. I read it in two days and my jaw was like, I was speechless the whole book, such an amazing book. It's a thriller, it's a romantic thriller. Um, And it's just, I'm constantly telling people like, I'm giving them my book. I'm like, please read this and give it back to me in two days because I know you'll finish it. So super good book, read it, Verity. Um, I got mine on Amazon, so it should be very easy to get. I want to ask you about... um game day hairstyle you know what's your favorite I have one one um I, well that was the whole point of the style. question but I just wanted to let you yeah. you know <laughs> yeah my hairstyle is kind of like my trademark I guess people know me for my braids um I always have the three it's this way I always have the three braids cornrow here and then I do a high ponytail and then three long 
thick braids um, all the way down. And I don't know what got me started, like what I start, like why I even started that. I, I was, I think it was my first year on the national team. I had, I saw a girl have three corn row and then I saw someone else like have two braids in their ponytail. And so I was kind of like, let me just, you know, try it, put it together. And I had the three braids in my hair with the corn row and I actually played really well that game. And, you know, as soccer players were very superstitious. So once you do something one time and it works, you have to keep doing it. Um, and so I think that's why I kept the hair going. And then after that, like people would come up to me and ask about my hair. So I kind of was like, no, I can't ever take it out. And so that's my hairstyle. It's been my hairstyle for like five years. Um, and it's what I do every single game day. I love it. It's very iconic. It's very like, this I is love it. definitely Erica with the braids, you know? <laughs> you don't even have to know my last name. You just see the braids and you're like, that's her. Yeah. Like, she's right there. You know, you can tell because of the whole uh, hairstyle thing. I want to ask you, um, are you a fan of batting helmets? I want Because there's a video that I, that I saw, you know, not just one video. There's multiple, there's multiple. videos. <laughs> multiple. I am a fan. I'm a, I'm a huge fan of batting helmets. The batting helmets are fans of you. <laughs> yeah, no, not, not with AU. Like, I don't know what it was. None of the helmets fit me. And they were so big. And I think they both fit differently. So, like, the white one was even bigger than the black helmet that we had. And every single time I would run, you could – there's one video, and I'm glad they posted it because it shows, like, it slowly start falling. Because mm-hmm. at first, I think people literally thought, like, I would grab my helmet and just throw it. Like, I yeah. didn't want it. I'm like, no. And I kept sharing that video. I'm like, look, guys, it's literally falling off it's of my head up, as I'm yeah. running. Yeah. And there's that falling off. So, every single time I would run – it would get to a point where like, this is slowing me down. So I would just throw it and I would just keep running. And I'm the video that I think you're talking about, the big one was the home run one where I hit the grand slam and like took my helmet off. And everyone after that game, they're like, Erica, we thought you were going to throw your helmet to the fans. And I'm like, that never crossed my mind. It's kind of cool, but it never crossed my mind. I literally, I remember like I hit the grand slam and my helmet's already at here at this point. And so I took it off because I wanted to like adjust it. But like the way I took it off and then I, I was like, oh my God, Erica, as I'm running, I'm telling myself like this probably looks so bad. So I put it back on. My head. And it's just, I literally at some point I was like this close. I'm like, I'm just going to get a chin strap because it's not working. Um, but yeah, but definitely got a lot of videos out of that one because I kept running without a helmet. I think. Um... Not safe. Don't do that at home. <laughs> One of the games that I went to, you did the the same thing where you, you were running and you took your helmet off. I was like, what is, what is going yeah. on? And then, and then I have to call time out and like do the walk of shame and grab my <laughs> helmet and put it back on. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was a mess this year. I want to ask you, um, <laughs> what is the, out of the four colors available for AU, which one is your favorite? I have I have two. So my favorite color is baby blue. That's my favorite color. And I think the baby blue uniform is so beautiful. Like just wearing it. It's just my favorite color. Um, if we're, and then purple also, I love the purple uniform. If we're talking experiences like team experiences and like what my favorite Jersey has been lately. Um, I actually love the gold Jersey because of like the last weekend and the, being the golden um, shooting stars and me like constantly jumping with it on. And it was just a fun experience. So I love every color. Orange, I'm not a huge fan of. Just the color is just too much for me. But it's fun. I mean, AU, all the colors, they just make it fun. So uh, I love every color, but baby blue, I think, is the one that looks the best, personally. And if you could add a color, which one would you add? I actually voted. I, I was one of the comments. AU asked the fans this on one of their social media posts, and I commented. And I was like, green, like, we need green in there. I think that would be really cool. Um, or just black like I know that's not really like a color but black I think black uniforms look so good and um, I'm always a fan of the black pants with the black socks like anytime I have to vote for uniform I was like let's just wear all black but if you add a black jersey to that like that's beautiful love it and are you a fan of playing on a turf or dirt this one's tough because I've always been a fan of dirt I love just getting dirty during a game, like diving and like your jersey being dirty, like just shows like you playing hard. And then I love like the feel of dirt. Like I like touching the dirt. And um, if my hands get sweaty, the dirt was always like there. 
to kind of help. Um, in college, we actually switched halfway through my four years, we switched to turf. And I was so upset because I'm like, our jerseys are going to be clean every game. Like, that's so annoying. Um, but then it kind of like, I started to really like turf. Um, it looks really good. The field looks super professional and you always get a good hop. Like, it's always like perfect hops. Um, so I'm, I'm actually a fan of both. I do miss dirt. I haven't played on dirt in a while. Um, but the AU turf, the AU stadium in itself is so beautiful to me. So I love it. And um, game day stuff. Uh, is there a specific song that you listen to to help prepare for the game? Um, not a specific song. I think it depends on my mood. Uh, this last weekend, my best friend from college was in town. So we almost did like a throwback back to my college years. And we listened to like all our walk up songs from college um and Kevin Gates he's a Louisiana rapper so uh, we went back to the Louisiana style and, and got really hyped with their music and finally I want to ask you about um okay so for people that don't know uh each player plays for an organization and I want to know why you picked the organization you were playing for this year so I this year I played for the our it's called our foundation and it's the Operation Underground Railroad um, and I picked it because it really stood out to me when I was kind of like doing my research. And it's an organization that not a lot of people know about. And it's their uh, whole like uh, foundation is they're trying to help women and children get out of sex trafficking. And they're like um, a rescue group. And um, but not only do they save women and children from sex trafficking, they also go above and beyond and they also help with the the aftermath of being a sex trafficker and being in that situation and being abused and um and they go through um they kind of like have steps it's almost kind of like a um rehabilitation program they they save you but then i feel like a lot of organizations they, they do the saving part but then they kind of like okay you're saved now you do the rest of your life and figure out on your own rather than the, um, our organization, they, they set you up and they bring you to the doctors. They set, set you up with doctor's appointments. They set you up with a therapist. They put you in groups of um, people that you can talk to about that kind of are survivors and went through the same thing. So it's like a, a foundation that you have with um, throughout your whole life. And it's something that kind of like keeps you going on the right path. And, and then I also think it's a foundation that I think makes a lot of people uncomfortable. And I really wanted to um, choose them because I wanted to use my platform and getting their name out there and um, getting, everybody knows that sex trafficking is out there. And I feel like people like don't like talking about it, but everybody knows how bad it is. And so I kind of want to like, I'm big on, on bringing those uncomfortable discussions and putting them out there and having people talk about it and, and face them with it. So that's like my main reason with it. And then I also was just very curious to, learn more about it and um it was me and Riley Sarton a third baseman she picked the same foundation so we also got to talk about it and it's it opened my eyes to a lot and it's a lot of things that um we've always known about but no one ever wanted to do the research about it so I think is is a super fun um experience for me is to just learn more about it and be able to help any way possible I'm going to put a link in the description for people to learn more about that. Um, Cause it's also, yeah. I've, I've done, I've looked through some of the foundations that people were playing for and it's like, Oh, this is very interesting. I didn't know there was like a thing set up for this. And also there's this thing. Um, I actually just watched a, was like a PBS frontline thing about uh, sex trafficking in Europe. It's from like 2006. Um, I watched it for my sociology class. It was about a, uh, a guy lost his wife through sex trafficking, like from like a person that they knew. It was yeah. very like, it was an hour long. It was about, it, they were from Ukraine. It was just like so heartbreaking. Um, and it, it happens to so many women, but because it's not talked about, like nobody knows that, like nobody knows how, um, like the extent of sex trafficking. And it's like, it, it could literally be happening to people that you know, like right next to you or people that you went to school with. And um, it's just crazy to think about it. Like once you like really start doing research, like it's very eye-opening and um, it's heartbreaking to, to hear the stories, but 
then you see organizations and foundations like this one that are actually out there continuously helping them, even though it's not a topic that's talked about. So again, please uh, check out the link listed in the description. There's a bunch of other resources down there that I'll talk about in my outro. But uh, again, Erica, I want to thank you for coming on today. Where can people follow you on social? You can follow me on um, Erka underscore 20, U-R-K-A underscore 20 on Instagram. And my Twitter is the same thing with an extra U in the front of Erka. Um, that's my handle pretty much for anything. Um, I'm very active on Instagram. I try to interact with a lot of people and um, I use my platform a lot. So if you want to follow me on that, that's kind of where I'm most active. And then you're going to be uh, playing in Italy uh, coming up. Is there a way that people can watch that? Yeah, so I'm actually flying out tomorrow. Uh, my club team is called Furli Softball. I post about them occasionally. They um, I start the championship series this weekend. And a lot of the games are on YouTube. So I'm going to be posting the link on my Instagram. Um, but it's the last five games of season. So um, definitely we'll be blasting that everywhere on social media. And the time difference might make it hard to watch. Um, but there are definitely some good games. And they're going to be on YouTube or Facebook. And is there anything else that you want to promote before we end here today? Um, I did recently just get my AU um, discount code for merch that I'll be also putting on my Instagram. Um, so let me actually see what, okay. My discount code is, oh, that's easy. It's E Piancastelli um, 2021. So I'll be posting that on my blast, uh, blasting out my social media. You get 20% off merch. Um, and I think all AU merch is amazing. They have different shirts with, themes on them and just amazing quotes and being unlimited and love is love. So many different things that we stand for in AU and it's all on their merch. So I'm definitely going to be sharing that with everybody because I need everybody to hop on some AU merch and represent us when we're not playing. Yeah, me too. too. Yeah, always. Yep. And always. I got stickers yeah. on my computer um, that I bought when I was there. I think I'm going to buy maybe one more thing before, you know, my, my bank phone. account before my bank account yeah. goes to zero. I actually I just bought um baseball, not the baseball cards. Well, I bought it from Tops. I I collected oh, yeah. baseball uh, cards as a kid. That's why cards. I said baseball, softball cards. My apologies. <laughs> the trading cards. I yeah. love those. Those are super cool. Yeah. I can't wait for those to come and I'll put them in my little book with all my other baseball cards. Um, been collecting since I was like eleven. Just been into that stuff, and now I get to add women that's awesome yeah women book. right yes <sighs> that's awesome are you ready for my fun little outro it's not scripted it's not planned it comes out from the, this thing right here my noggin um it is very wacky and wild and i apologize in advance <laughs> go for okay it. Take a, i'm gonna take a big deep breath because i go really fast okay if you want to feel, follow me on social, guess what? You can on Twitter and Facebook. It's the same handle. It's WSM Podcast because, hey, Twitter doesn't like really long handles. So, of course, it's not going to be the name of the show. It's going to be the um, abbreviation of it. Isn't that fun? I'm also on Instagram. It's Women Sports Matter, the actual name of this show. Um, I post when I have new episodes out. I make fun little graphics because I can. It has like quote of the episode. Sometimes <laughs> I post clips. It just depends on uh, if I have homework or not, because I'm still in school. I have to keep reminding people that because they think I'm some sort of adult. I am technically, um, but I'm not. There's a bunch of resources listed down below, like a registering to vote. I think yesterday was National uh, Register to Vote Day, which is cool. You should definitely register to vote. Um, because you, you should. I really shouldn't have to explain, but what do I know? I'm 19. Anyway, there's also a link down below. It's vaccines.gov. That's right. Vaccines.gov. Get vaccinated for COVID. Get the Pfizer, Moderna, uh, Johnson & Johnson. I think that's what's available in the U.S. Use the link. Put your address in. Find the nearest vaccination site near you. It could be a Walgreens, a Walmart, your doctor's office. Who knows? <laughs> Type your address in and uh, get vaccinated. Jeez, I want to go to school without a mask. I feel like that's very self-explanatory. But moving on, I'm trying to start up my YouTube ch uh, channel up again so you can actually see this interview. Wouldn't that be fun? 
I need someone to help me with this stuff so I can actually do that. But I'm trying to start it up. It's the Woman Sports Matter podcast. We're six subscribers strong. Maybe that's why, because I don't have anything posted within the last year. I've been doing this for two years and what a mess. <laughs> I think that's all I'm going to plug. Uh, get vaccinated, wear a mask, wash your hands, um, register to vote. Go check out uh, Athletes Unlimited. Go follow Erica on social. Follow all the athletes on social. Um, but that's what I did on both uh, Twitter and Instagram for my podcast account. Love seeing what everyone's up to. Um, good luck in Italy. And um, hopefully Thank we'll you. see you in AU season three. Um, yes. I'm excited for that. And also AU has more than just softball. Check up volleyball and lacrosse. And I heard they're adding another sport soon. I hope it's something fun and interesting. Um, I can't wait to see what that is, but that's going to be it for me. My name is Gianna Castro. This is the Women's Sports Matter podcast, and I'm going to go take a nap. Just kidding. I'm going to go do homework. Gotcha. Anyway, thank you so much for listening, and uh, I'll see you guys next week. Thanks. See you.